You are now listening to the Full Sport Press podcast, featuring hosts Jehove, Jeff, and Weezy. Please enjoy the show. Greetings and salutations. I would like to welcome everybody back and some of you for the first time to the Full Sport Press podcast, the premier sports podcast for the consummate sports fan. And this is your one stop shop for all sports related news and topics. I am Jay Ho. It's your boy, Big Jeff. Weezy in the building. Say what's up, Weezy. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, fellas? How's it going, sir? Cameraman on Martin Scorsese. How you doing, buddy? You all right? One, one thumb up. One thumb up. One, one change up. thing you pay. Yeah. For sure. Let's shake it thumb. Let's shake Yeah. 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 In the islands of Waikiki. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> they got two thumbs. Okay, for sure. Uh, how was everybody's week? Good week. Good, good week. week. Good week. Good week. Good week. Good for sure. Weather finally broke. Weather broke. broke for week. <laughs> yeah, we got to worry about our allergies and sinuses <laughs> big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Good. And then he, then he, he hoping not. Then he hoping <laughs> not. <laughs> We've been hoping not for 20 years. Yeah, then, then you hope not. Then you, you hope not. I hope not. Um, it's all right. Yeah, for sure. Episode 292, we mm. are previewing the two- 2019 NCAA basketball season. FSP style. Always FSP style. Better damn know it. Better damn believe it. Let's kick it off, man. Best of the week, Weezy. What you got? My best of the week was uh, NBA, man. Yeah. yeah. And everybody sleeping on Zion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> everybody sleeping on Zion. <laughs> Boy, I'm tripping. I'm a fan. Yeah. Everybody sleeping on Zion, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Zion showing up. Yeah, showing, showing up and out. showing out. Showing out. He's showing out. For sure. Yeah. Most definitely. Jeff, what you got best of the week? Uh... I don't care who won or lost the game. Okay. The Bills Mafia showed up in Nashville sure. this week. Did they say that, uh, <laughs> that the kid that jumped off the thing, uh, he missed the he concussed. 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 He uh, two broke wrists. Yeah, it looked like it. Yeah, yeah he had double, a broke <laughs> Double wrist break. <laughs> double wrist break and a concussion. Okay. He's in, the, he's in the mafia, He's though. in the mafia, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for they, sure. We definitely had a good time in Nashville. Sure I, did, don't man. care about who won or lost the game. Sure. Just saying they showed up. That was tough to watch. I'm glad you brought that up, man. Okay. All right. I was at that game. Oh. Huh. And... I used to think like Cleveland, Cleveland had the worst fans. Cause yeah. Cleveland fans are bad too. Uh-huh. But the Bills fans, yeah. like they they wanted everything. Yeah, they wanted all. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to fight whatever. Yeah. <laughs> with all of that. Yeah. yeah, with all that the mafia travels. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Yeah. It was shocking. I said, man, I gotta get out of here before yeah. I get mad. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it is a, it's obnoxious that. too, right? Yeah. Like they don't. We just we so we so used to losing. We don't care what's going on. Yeah, we sure four and one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We won the tailgate. That's how we care it. about. They win it every year. <laughs> every game. Every game. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. My best of the week is Stephen Reed is the mayor of Montgomery, Alabama. 38 years old. was the first African-American governor in the city's 200-year history. Mm-hmm. He captured 67% of the vote, and the black community makes up 60% of the city's population. So nice. That's dope, man. Shout out to Stephen Shout Reed. Shout out to Steve. Give him a bank here, bounce with Steve. For sure. Give him a bank here, bounce. We have a user's best of the week. I Uh-oh. called to tell you this. Okay. Shout out to my coworker, Brian. Okay. Uh, he's playing himself into shape. Okay. Uh, because of Wheezy. Okay. Yeah, now he's over our mindful meditation at work, and he told uh, me to tell Wheezy mm-hmm. that he is also playing himself into shape. Shout out to Brian. Brian. Shout out to Brian. Probably have Brian. Brian come out do some content related stuff, man. Doing some <laughs> mindful meditation would be good for y'all. Man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good to me. Most definitely, man. Worst of the week. Let's kick it out, Wheezy. What you got? <laughs> my worst of the week. Yeah. They did my boy Kobe Kingston wrong. Sure it wasn't even two seconds. Mm. Ding, 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 ding. And the new champion is. <laughs> it would be addressed in the 10 worst wrestlers. Ten worst for sure. It hurt me, though. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, couldn't sure. believe my eyes, but hey, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move yeah. on. What you got, Jeff? That's my worst, but it's going to sure. be addressed. Yeah, okay. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, my worst is very similar. Uh, the Penn State racist. <laughs> a Penn State alum, Dave Peterson. Bleep out his name, cameraman. Yeah. I don't want him to get any more publicity than he yeah. already had, but um, he sent out an open letter to Jonathan Sutherland's shoulder length. Dreadlocks. I said it looked awful and disgusting, and uh, he missed the clean-cut young men and women from his time at Penn State. Him and his wife, and in quote, have stopped watching the NFL <laughs> due to the disgusting tattoos, awful hair, and immature antics in the end zone. So Penn State came out and said that um, Sutherland is a captain to the team, a dean's list, honor student. Mm. So anybody listening to this podcast. Mm. 
just judge a human by their appearance. Do some actual research yeah. on the actual individual. But that's how I like my races, though. Yeah. Um, Straight out in front. Uh, man, Let us know. Do he signed his name <laughs> yeah. to the letter, owned it. Yeah. But I, the main question I do have is where's the outrage when the little boys that would get molested for 30 years <sighs> at the same institution? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to know if you were equally disgusted yeah. with that. Where was that letter at? Yeah, and I'm yeah. sure because the rest of the world was. And then, and then brought up my seminals and all this. Yeah, yeah, by name. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep, you know, no, no, I wasn't being a racist. I just didn't yeah. want to be like the Florida State Miami players. She seems Word, like, bro. Right. Like, that's how you feel. Yeah, sure. I like that's how I like my racist stuff for sure. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Jason Whitlock for taking his side too on Fox Sports. Shut the hell up. I don't understand why black people are so attached to their hair. This isn't racism. The guy has an opinion. That's what he said live on air. Oh. That's what he said live on air. I don't understand why black people are so attached to their hair. That he, letter was not racist. He got spray on his head. Make sure you wow. check us out on iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, Google Play, Stitcher, Beyond Pod, YouTube, and of course, the SoundCloud page to catch up on the full archive of past episodes of FSP. Just search for Sport Press Podcast. And after you do that, check out the On Deck TV Hip Hop Podcast with Animal Brown and Spike Lou each. And, oh, and producer M Extra. Don't forget each, you. Please. <laughs> He'll find you in the group chat. I don't want no smoke yeah, with him. He, he, he's ready every day, Paul. Sure. <laughs> hey, producer M Extra on the boards each and every Wednesday. This week's show is the BET Hip Hop Awards well, actual uh, nomination show. Yeah, guess the winner. Yeah, guess the winner. How do you guys feel about that? You guys uh, watch the awards? I did watch the awards. It's a little different, but <laughs> I like the... The trajectory of where BET is going with their hip hop awards. Yeah. I think they need to sustain and put the same energy into the regular awards they put <laughs> the hip hop awards. Okay. And it'll be better. Bring back the ciphers. Um they only had two this year, right? Yeah, I know. I just, yeah. yeah. It was a comedy one and then it was yeah. one with uh with our girl Cash. Shout out to Cash Yeah, for sure. Shout yeah, out to Cash sure. Dog. Yeah, no. Nah, but um <laughs> more than anything, man, I like the way the trajectory of what BET is doing for sure. Yeah, they the streaming service. <laughs> shout out to Tyler Pierce. Yeah, sure. yeah, shout yeah. out to him. <laughs> Fresher Than Your Average Podcast, me and my dog Animal Brown, is a self-help fashion podcast directly related to improving everyday fashion. Same great content with a new name. You catch our latest issue. Issue number 53 is up right now directly for the culture. Hit the hotline 629-777-5565 and drop a voicemail so we can answer your fashion-related questions on the next issue. Where your kicks? Cop responsibly. Uh-oh. Sure. Got a cop. You been copping responsibly, Weezy? I've. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Sure. Most definitely. A little bit. There we go. All right. All right. And, and you can read up on your favorite FSP co host. <clears throat> All right. Purchase your FSP merchandise and catch up on the past episodes. Now you tapping your leg up against that one. You didn't even know. Mm-hmm. My bad. That's all good now. Okay. <laughs> you can read up on your favorite FSP co host, purchase your FSP merchandise, and catch up on the past episodes from the shows we just mentioned and much, much more. How you do that, your ass wheezy? Just search Triple W, Realville Media. Dot com. Mm, dot com. All right. Tell a friend to support the real. RMG. RMG, most definitely. Jeff, you got 10 good wrestling seconds. Oh, I'm going to give you 15. Let's Thank go. you. So we set through Triple H telling Booker T the championship belt is not for people like you. We set through Mark Henry having to have sex with an 80 year old white woman and she births a hand on live TV. Yeah, we set through all of that. Set through Ron Simmons being the first African American champion in WCW history, only to never have main event a pay per view while he was champion. Set through all of that. We pushed to have Kofi as champion, right? Get Kofi Kingston as champion. And he loses his belt in how many seconds, Weezy? About two. That's probably being generous. Yeah. And I hear the, all the cries about it. Oh, there was timing issues because the Rock segment went long earlier. Rock did go 25 minutes, probably too long. However, if this is your champion and this is the main event of your show, why not cut something else out? Yeah. Why Why a man who's had a belt for six months, who's captivated a culture that you normally don't tap into because y'all know how y'all do us, mm-hmm. and then you take his belt away in three seconds? You want all the backlash you caught over the weekend between that and the end to the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view that we didn't even talk about, which was a terrible pay-per-view, but you ruined that anyway because look what you did to Bray Wyatt. And you wonder why you hear people saying, I'm tired of this, or it's oversaturated, or I can't keep up with it. Because of stuff like that. Yeah. Do better, man. Do better your WWE. Because you're about to lose a lot of people because you can't have a champion that you've never tapped into before lose a belt in three seconds on live TV on the first show of the biggest night of your company. That's trash, man. It's trash. All around trash. Shout out to Kofi Kingston. Yeah, man. Yeah. Shit. 
Yeah. Right. That was 10 good wrestling seconds. All right. Yeah, for sure. Oh, damn. Yeah. Woo. All right. <laughs> In case you missed it, Tyler Lockett, um, 27-year-old Tyler Lockett, is a virgin and is saving himself for marriage. Okay. Lockett has a girlfriend who understands his stance and is cool with waiting until marriage. Now, Lockett has the support of his teammate, Seattle quarterback Russell Wilson, who also waited until marriage to copulate with Sierra. Now, Lockett has a poetry book that will release this week and hopes, or Lockett hopes, that this book will, and I quote, give readers an opportunity to reflect on their own lives as well, end quote. Shout out to Tyler Lockett, man, the 27-year-old virgin. Shout um, to I respect anybody that's going through that long haul. Mm-hmm. Once you get past a certain age, yeah, you got to stick with yeah, it, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. go the full way he, with it, you he, know. He's 27. He made it from college. Oh, you're yeah, good. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That and, <laughs> and, you you know, you're um, a professional football player yeah. having a great season. Ain't even worth it at this yeah, point. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. You might as well stick it out for sure. So, yeah. shout out to Tyler Lockett. That's a big deal. Yeah. Most definitely. Woo. And then tweet us with questions <laughs> throughout the week at Full Sport <laughs> Press. Don't forget to comment. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the YouTube page. On the iTunes page, please rate and subscribe. But more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. Tell a friend. That the revolution will be podcasted. And before we get started with the first half, do you have a yellow box of Cheerios award recipient for the listeners, Weezy? I do. I do. I do. Let the people this hear. This week's recipient is a Drexel professor. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Most definitely, man. Dr. Chica in Wonkpay. Uh-oh. Misused one hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars, Jeff, of government grants Uh-oh. from July two thousand seven through April two thousand seventeen while working at Drexel University. Okay. Right? Okay. So the professor sent ten, he spent tens of thousands of dollars in federal money for local strip clubs and sports <laughs> bars over a ten year period. Now the university has agreed to pay back the money to resolve its potential civil liability in the case, and the grants were supposed to be spent on research related to energy and naval technology. Well, <laughs> right, <laughs> slick, right. Well, but an internal audit revealed the professor was using the money for personal iTunes purchases and goods and services provided by cheerleaders, Club Risque, and the Taconi Club, all in Pennsylvania. The doc paid back the university fifty three thousand and was banned from federal contracting for only six months. He was not charged with a crime. Here's the thing: strip clubs in Philadelphia aren't even that good to spend close to one hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars on. So anywhere, just well, maybe Atlanta. Yeah, maybe Atlanta, maybe Atlanta, Houston, Dallas. Yeah, but oh, this is <laughs> even further more to the point where I'm telling you, yeah. certain people you can't trust in this world. Yeah, man. and each week they continue to prove me right, Jeff. <laughs> they continue to prove me 100% right. <laughs> I'm telling you. We just sent it out to him. I, we don't need to get it primed. Nah, we'll um, get we're gonna get, just gonna send he it. Didn't get, he didn't get charged. He didn't get charged. Yeah. Yeah. We, we'll get it to him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll yeah. get it to him. Snail mail. Yeah, Regular. you got to sign for it, though. Mm. Got to sign for oh, it. got to sign okay. for it. Okay. okay. Most okay. Definitely. No. Yeah. But this is what I'm trying to tell you. Listen to me. <laughs> All right, listen. Can't trust him. Can't win with him. Yeah, you can't win with that. Won't win with him. Not doing research at the strip club. Can't play with him. <laughs> research can be done at the strip club. On uh, college money, though? College funded? No, no. Yeah, Not especially yeah, nah. uh, naval. Naval and... Uh, <laughs> nah, bro. And, and energy. Energy. <laughs> Technology. Try to see how much the, mu- how much the lighting. <laughs> right. Lighting. Yeah. LED light. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. Can't trust Can't trust him. Listen to him. Mm-hmm. My bad. All right. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> you guys ready to start the first half? Yes, so. Let's do it. The first half is underway. First half, the hottest sports news of the past week, like we do each and every week here at the Full Sport Press Podcast. Before we get started, I am J Ho. It's your boy, Big Jeff. I'm Weezy. What it do? Weezy, where can they find you at on social media, my brother? FSP underscore Weezy on IG, and I'm at How Weezy on Twitter. Holla at me. Most definitely. And I am J A I H O V on Instagram and Twitter. Where you at, Jeff? J Easily 84 across all social media platforms. Sure, and it's FSP underscore cameraman on the gram. It's here. Yeah. We need to not nah. yeah, um, forget that. Yeah, did that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you gonna cut that out for me? No. All right. Hey, <laughs> we need some posts, bro. Like you ain't posting nothing in a minute. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. That's what's up. Put it right. Yeah. Still, maybe next yeah. week. He on his iPad. Yeah. iPod. <laughs> All right. All right. Shout out to the iPod. All right. All right. Weez, you got a new segment. I do. What's the name of that segment? Three now. Let's get it going then. I asked for five. What they give you? They gave me three. Okay. All, All right. right. This week, number one, it's a little rough week for the quarterbacks this week, Joe. Mm. It was a little rough week for them. Lamar Jackson had three interceptions, yeah. but still won in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And Mahomes only scored one touchdown in two games. 
Yeah. What, a get, film coming out on him. Can I get that? Uh, get, nope. Uh oh. He ain't no weapons. We don't got, we don't got Travis Kelsey. Okay. <laughs> Keep it a buck. Right. Sammy. Sammy, Sammy, hurt. Hurt. Sammy got hurt. Sammy missed his. We got uh, Demarcus uh, Robinson. Demarcus Robinson open. You know why? He's a gator. <laughs> and Baker Mayfield. Okay. Well, only threw right. 400 yards. Mm-hmm. Okay. He only threw 400 yards and three interceptions on the Monday Night Football game. Yeah, they, Can we get a hug? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've been trying to tell you about it, babe. Number two. Forty nine was on his head. <laughs> Number two. Deshaun Watson ain't playing around, is he? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He threw for 426 and five touchdowns. <sighs> and put up 53 points. He did. Mm. Threw him all the wheel full of two. Shut, yeah, shut, shut up the head. And number three. Number three. Christian McCaffrey. White Lightning. White Lightning. Can we say MVP yet? Four mm-hmm. games in. I know. It's a quarterback in Seattle. All, That's yeah, something to say about that, too. Uh, all-purpose yard record for 237, mm. three touchdowns, mm. and broke a record for 84-yard run touchdown. There you go. <sighs> Shout out to that. I asked for five, but they gave me three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, man. Good job. Good job. Good job. We, all right. Okay. Let's move on. Oh, gosh, to the week six <laughs> of the FSP Fantasy Football League. Yeah. I'm glad when this shit. Oh, we're oh, here. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we starting with. Show me them TDs versus Urban Meyer's Faulty Memory. It looks like uh, Urban Meyer's Faulty Memory is ahead right now. Show me them TDs is pretty. Okay, it's going to move right along. Um, <laughs> and the squeakers are looking at. Oh, computer's not alone. It's not the DP. Okay. All right. So the squeakers. Uh, shout out to the squeakers. Two and three. Versus Shane. Shane, I said it right. Shane, yeah, you, you got boss. Boy. Yeah, Shane mm-hmm. put got him a win last week. Mm-hmm. Shane is projected to win this one. The Squeakers are, uh, yeah, rough. Yeah, rough for them right now. Yeah. Uh, then we move on to what it do, baby. <laughs> versus now, watch God. Mm-hmm. This is starting off as a close one. Deep in your computer. Yeah, Sean said that. Uh, shout out to Sean Watch. Sean Watch said that. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a wide gap in between first. And him. Sean yeah. Watts ain't lying. Yeah. 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 But who the one to beat him, though? Okay. Ah, I'm right. Get out yeah. of I control the draft. Yeah. I didn't control it. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so <laughs> now watch God at 4 and 1 versus, you know, Chaz and what it do, baby, at 3 and 2. It should be a good game. It should be. Chaz is projected to win in a blowout. Um, <laughs> uh, Sean Watts has got a couple of buys this week, it looks like. But, I mean, you know, projections are projections. They could be wrong. But he's right. He is 4 and 1, and he is. Ahead by a comfortable margin right now. Okay. Anyway, moving on to last place two years in a row. Uh, the three and two. Shout out to AB versus you. Choose a side. Mm-hmm. Got the you know the one and four, but it's it's it's, it's turning around for Weezy, mm-hmm. right? You projected to win this week, so hopefully you keep that up. I, I got. I want to win this week, man. You got to win out, cuz. I is it? Do I got room? No. I can't lose no more games. Uh, I win out. Okay. All right. So Vandalay International, shout out to Reagan. Three and two versus Spike Lou. Spike Lou on a two game win streak as well. Yeah. This one's going to be close. Vandalay International projected to win, but it's going to be a close game. Yeah. And we got uh, Winston's eye exam. Shout out to me. Sure. On a three game win streak um, versus the Diplomats, who are 0 5. Uh, yeah. Keep fighting, Cam. Keep uh, fighting. 0 5. Just, just keep fighting. Oh, I, got, I, can't, I didn't know he was 0 5. I gotta call him. <laughs> he, he dead last. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's got to keep fighting though. I mean, dead last. Uh, we got to, we got. And then you know, the person that's in dead last, uh, you got to do something wild. So Shane is coming up with that. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> be careful, Shane. Yeah, yeah, might, be, be, might be right behind. Yeah, yeah I, mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, three and two, is, three and two is is Sean Wash yeah. at four and one. Three and two is congested. Yeah, then it's one and four and zero and five. <laughs> hey man, for real, I'm hot at you. Nah, I'm hot at you. uh Oh. <laughs> I'm hot at you. <laughs> Hold the team down, dog. Man. Anyway, Mm-mm. I'm up. Yes, sir. Let's talk some basketball. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's an understatement to say the NBA is a big deal in China. Okay. Since Daryl Morey tweeted to the side of the protesters, everything has spiraled, Jeff. Yeah. With the executive apologizing, numerous business relationships falling apart, and the league's relationship with China suddenly looking very shaky. Right. Now, he may have had no idea what he was doing, but the outspoken GM seems to have placed the league and his team in an impossible position. However, the strength of this once strong relationship okay. is in the peril this fall. Can this major issue be fixed? Um. 
Whew, China is steadfast in this. Yes, you know? Serious, dog. <laughs> like they They're are doubling not, down. Du they triple down. Triple this boy, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and the situation doesn't seem to be going away. No. Nah. It was he. His tweet was unwarranted. It I was think? unwarranted yeah. for sure. And he's messing up the church's money. Oh yeah. No. Say. Well, um, shout out to I, the fact he still has his job. That's crazy. And I think the only reason why is because the NBA has taken the stance with uh, their players speaking out on actions and things going on here in America. For sure. And they kind of had to keep that same energy, as we say, um, we with, with Daryl Morley. But, man, that's tough. this just came out of nowhere last yeah. week, and it just it doesn't go it's away, like you said. Away. Yeah, for sure. Basketball is now the most popular sport among Chinese youth, yeah. and the NBA is the country's most popular sport. Yeah. Um, even if you look at Thursday night's game with the mm -hmm. Lakers and the Nets in a preseason game, yeah. Uh, floor seats were being sold right around twenty five hundred bucks. So, yeah. when Tillman uh, Fertitta, okay. the guy that owns the Rockets, right. when he bought them two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. he paid two point two billion. Considering the fact that, dude, the Rockets were China's team. Yep. So now Chinese authorities seem to be intent on cutting off all ties, which can be a huge deal for the <sighs> NBA and the actual um, value of yeah. that franchise. Yeah. So I don't know, man. The Rockets could come up with a way. To maybe fire him, which might satisfy China yeah. at the end of the day, but I don't think that'll happen. Like you said, yeah. man, because that would ruin the entire counter that's an mm -hmm. image that the league is actually having right now, cultivated by having people express themselves um, in certain situations. So I don't know, man. But Adam Silver's in a tough position. Right yeah, now. I won't even talk to him. Nah, he won't even sit down and talk to him. That's nuts, man. Because y'all don't want to look like look like he's crossing. Country yeah, line, exactly. Like, that's, yeah, this this that's is his. a big deal, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, the NBA they have always wrestled with this type of tension, yeah. being in bed with China, yeah. being that they're so socially, yeah. Um, the government uh, controls everything over there, right? Like, even with the game, the game went on, but they pulled all media access from everyone. Yeah, man. Didn't allow Adam Silver to talk after the game or you know during the game. It's crazy. Um, I believe it wasn't even broadcast over no, there after it so. sold out. So yeah. it, this is different, man. It's different, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk about it some more in the next couple of weeks for sure. Okay. Um, the WNBA final. Here we go. The Washington Mystics are WNBA champions for the first time in franchise history. Uh -huh. And Washington, which produced the most efficient offense in the league, which I did not know. Mm -mm. Uh, they beat the Connecticut Sun in a tight game, five in D.C. It's mm -hmm. the first title for two-time MVP Elena Deladon. And um, their coach and GM, mm -hmm. which is the winningest coach in WNBA history, who basically put together the Connecticut Sun team, though. So wow. shout out to the Mystics, man. Yeah. See John Wall, Brad Bill yeah. at the game. At the game, yeah. Um, their coach, Christy Tolliver, mm -hmm. is the point guard for the Mystics. So it was a good game, man. Here's the only thing I didn't like about it. Uh -oh. So you had this big game. Mm -hmm. Huge game. It's a game five. This game is a five. closeout game. Yeah. And it's on the same day. As the um, Thursday night football game. Of course. It was on the same day as the ALDS between the Astros and Tampa Bay, which yeah. was a deciding game as well. Yeah. And it was on ESPN too. Yeah. Like it was just a matter of fact. It was like, oh yeah, WNBA, the biggest game in the WNBA season is on. Nobody cares, yeah. man. So um, yeah. it's rough for the WNBA right now. It is, but I think it, it gets some light because yeah. the championship did get, you know, People talking, you know, with your star player playing injured throughout the for whole sure. thing. Yeah. And, you know, it had people guaranteeing victories and things yeah, like no, that. Sure. That was dope. So that helps. Got them the cloud. Exactly. Yeah. So that helps with the um with the visibility of the league. So anything that helps like bring people bring eyes to yeah. it definitely helps. And their home is gonna be ESPN too regardless. No matter sure. what we think about it. Right. Especially you know, on a Thursday. Yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> I just think the WB is coming into its own though. Yeah. I think the the actual finals didn't have any household names but Deladon. Yeah. Um, Connecticut didn't have an air quote household name. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the cool. WNBA needs its push, a Magic yeah. and Bird type of rivalry, because that's what took the NBA to the next level. A yeah. big rivalry where somebody can pick a side and kind of follow that uh, actual person in their favorite team. So right. with the Sparks and the. Uh, 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 Minnesota, Minnesota Lynx, yeah. yeah. When they how they, how they kind of went over yeah. three or for two or three yeah, years, you so need that. You need that. Yeah, you need for people to kind of follow it and kind of see what's going on. So good year for the WNBA all in yeah. all. So shout out to the Mystics. Let's keep it in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Talk about future mm, number one. Do do we no bad? Okay, okay. Future yeah. high lottery. Okay, there we go. 
My guy. Your guy. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) The NBA League Hall Office has informed their teams that they are not permitted to scout practice involving projected 2020 top 10 draft picks, Mm -hmm. LaMelo Ball, and RJ Hampton. Right. All right. The ban stems from the interpretation of the NBA's no contact rule. Now, this is a little sketchy rule. It is. Right? It prohibits teams from having contact with drafting eligible players outside of a handful of approved settings like official games, select college practices, mm-hmm. and international practices involving only international players. Only is bold and italicized, if you know what I mean. Right. Ball and Hampton are currently considered draft ineligible since they have not officially declared for the 2020 draft through the league office. Mm -hmm. Now, you're asking, what is this about? Well, they were in America practicing this week Mm -hmm. to play against Memphis, and I believe... I know it was Memphis. Yeah, they were in Memphis practicing, so... OKC. OKC. Yep. And scouts were in Memphis for James Wiseman, uh, uh, Wiseman's Pro Day. Yeah, for in sure. Memphis. So 70 like, damn. Yeah, 70 damn scouts. <laughs> right. Right. So we wanted to kill two birds with one stone. Well, we can watch both of these guys. Sure. All three of these guys. So is this a big deal? Um, I think it was ridiculous for even putting it out there. I think okay. what they're trying to say is if you don't maintain a permanent resident outside of the U.S. Mm-hmm. for at least three years, then it doesn't make any sense for mm-hmm. us to be able to follow you because – you're just, you know, you're just using it as as a platform. Right. Not like Luca, who lived across. Yeah, of course, of course. Or Frank Nittalikina, when yeah. they were watching him. Sekou Demboye, yeah. who they've been following for the last five years. He plays for Detroit now. Yeah. So, um, especially considering the fact that those guys are in cahoots with <laughs> the NCAA, yeah. Man, dude, there's this collusion. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to keep their actual people in in the NCAA so they can use that platform yeah. instead of using their own, and it's trash. Yeah. And these are the number one picks. <laughs> 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 now, you know the NCAA, they're trying to hog titles, players, and um, I say and limit the visibility. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I say this is going to work for Melo and RJ Hampton. Absolutely. They'll both be lottery picks, mm-hmm. and I say that maybe five, maybe six. Players will do the exact same thing next year mm-hmm. until they're able to come out straight out of high school. Yeah. It's just too beneficial for you to go and get a year stronger, a year better, yeah. and also get paid and yeah. not lose any of your draft stock. Sign and me play up. against professionals. Sign me up, yeah. dog. Playing in that weak-ass Australian league. Yeah, it's, the, it's the best league no, in Australia. Not. Yeah, that's I, what I, I mean, yeah, no, for sure, in. but it's not like they're playing in the Euro League where, you know. Here you we know, go. Yeah, I'm Here saying that's go. where the best basketball is being played overseas. So they say. That's what I was saying. For sure. Shout out to LaMelo. Shout out to LaMelo, for yeah. sure. We'll see. <laughs> you called that one, Jeff, huh? I, hey. You been said it yeah. since I got here. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. We'll see. I've been saying it. But I'm telling you, it get a little tricky when you get in front of somebody. I'm telling you. Because when you go over there playing against Weezy and wow. Weezy and, and his nah, brother, and then, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Then it'd be trouble. Yeah, then yeah. you get out and then you switch it. <laughs> and he playing against Pat Bell. Yeah, well, well, everybody's not Pat Bell. I'm just saying. Everybody's not. I'm just saying you switch. Did you read that Bleach Report article? Well, I'm so, that's, that's a great article. That's a great that's article. That's a great article. Got a roof for him. Yeah, yeah. You you can be my I changed my, sure. my whole perspective. Pat Bell, yeah. you got a roof for him, dog. Yeah. Most definitely. Before we get started with halftime, let's talk Brandon Marshall. Oh, boy. Former Pro Bowl receiver Brandon Marshall is taking up a post career in boxing, Jeff. Yeah. And taking on some of the biggest challengers in his sport, his new sport at that. Okay. According to his recent Instagram announcement, he wanted to call out Anthony Joshua, Deontay <laughs> Wilder, Luis Ortiz, Andy Ruiz, Tyson Fury, in just one video. Those boxers boast a combined record of 150 and two. Okay. And two. Okay. With 123 combined knockouts, Brandon Marshall is zero, zero, and zero. And zero. Yeah. And, <laughs> and zero. And you know, stay away from that. <laughs> Marshall plans to stage his first fight in May 2020 against an undisclosed opponent. Mm-hmm. Can Brandon Marshall become the next great heavyweight champion? I blame Deontay Wilder for all of this. True. This is all his fault. Yep. The fact that he was not a boxer from jump and jumped into boxing and became so successful. Now, everybody thinks they can do this. True. No, nah, Brandon Marshall, this is a bad idea. Yeah. I don't care if you do fight some guy that should be fighting in the fairgrounds. If you, you know, if you're in the answer, sure. you know what I'm talking about. Fighting in the fairgrounds, even though he is maybe professional in the IBF or the, you know something like that. You know, you can fight number 52 ranked in the in the nation at you know in the fairgrounds. Right. Cool, have fun. But don't jump in that water fighting these professionals that are, have lost a combined two no, fights. No, let him jump in that water. <laughs> let him jump in that water. And it's, it's even quick work. worse. He's, <laughs> dude, he's doing this at 35 years old. Exactly. It's a tall task for anybody to join the ranks at 25 yeah. or 15. Right. Can you imagine doing that at 35 with no experience? He'll be, 
36 by the time he has this fight. Yeah. And he's 6'5", 235. But yeah. that's I think the only thing that's hurting him is his age. Yeah. Because by the time he gets in the ring with those guys, he'll yeah. be 37, 38. Easy. Yeah, no, nah, it's a rough age to fight some of those guys, all of those guys, especially heavyweight competition. Like, people think it's just a fight. Like, you just got to not. No, no, man. It's, it's reflexes you got to have and stuff like that. You learn What saved Deontay Wilder jumping into the game so late at 26, 25, 26, 27 was that he had the power to mm-hmm. knock somebody out in one punch. Mm-hmm. So his skills could catch up to that while he could still knock somebody out while he's training behind that. We mm-hmm. don't know Brandon Marshall has that type of one punch power. Sure. Like, Deontay Wilder, is, is, that's a gift. It's a gift. If he hits you with that, you're not going to stand in front of that. No. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, sure. no. So he could fight those guys as he's coming through no, the ranks learning his let him jump in that ring with him no, no he might no. need to reconsider that for real yeah. he needs some own boy <laughs> if I ever do some stupid stuff like that y'all pull me to the side and be like hey man don't do that yeah, like, you know you, yeah I'll let mm-hmm. you know no for sure just like I be sometimes I be trying to tell you no. hey don't do that chill out man no I'm just saying <laughs> what did I tell y'all I was going to do this week what, I don't remember what, what was you supposed to be doing this week Uh-oh. nah what I, th- what I thought about doing oh god I don't remember bro at the football game oh this fool let me tell you about this fool oh gosh this fool said man I'm sitting at the, at the Titans game mm-hmm. you know what man I thought about jumping over the thing and running <laughs> to the 50 yard line and I said Weezy that's what I'm trying to tell he's like they, they weren't going to catch me they weren't going to catch me <laughs> I was gonna make it. Yeah, I, was gonna, I was gonna make the first person miss. That's what he said. Yeah. First, that first guard, he was, he was gonna miss. Gonna I miss. worried about the next guard coming blindside. Yeah, definitely. But the definitely. first one was gonna miss you. Yeah. I promise you, he was gonna miss. What was the end result? I, it never, it never got to it. Okay, you just wanted to get to the fifty. Yeah, my boy needed a timeout real bad. So I'm like, man, they ain't got no timeouts left. This is gonna start some time. Oh, he said boy, the only thing I was worried about. No, he said the only thing I was worried about. I, mean, I just didn't want to, for real, like, failing me. I wonder what was really going to go on. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what, what the real offense was. Yeah, you might not be able to go to the game every yeah, year. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. See, I might give that up. <laughs> for real. <laughs> that's good to know, huh, Weezy? Yeah, I might to give that up. Oh, man, let's get started with halftime. We're at the midway point. Enjoy all of the halftime festivities. Halftime FSP Sports Trivia. We're bringing back the FSP Sports Trivia During this segment, we test the sports knowledge of our esteemed panel. And these questions are basketball-related, cameraman? For sure? Okay, cool. Are you guys ready? Yeah. How you feeling, Weezy? A little nervous, but I'll be all right. (laughs) Jeff, he's ready. Let's go. (laughs) Fellas, what's going on? Coach Locke back with another FSP trivia. Question number one. As of the 2016 Olympics, which NBA player has been on the U.S. Olympic basketball team a record number of times? I'm going to let y'all go. Because y'all be cheating. 16. No. Yeah. <laughs> a record number of times? We only got 10 seconds. Five. Kyrie Irving. That was terrible. <laughs> a record number of times would be four. And it wasn't mellow. It might be mellow. No. Nah. I go mellow just because. But it wasn't mellow. Mellow. Yeah, it's mellow. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Hey man, no, that's what I'm saying. You cheating, you helping them out. No, I was I'm literally Jack, counting them out. Here, in my, what's the next one? He just wanna be the only one to get the answers. That's bull crap, Jack. I'm counting out in my head. Like Yeah, man. Question two. There have only been five quadruple doubles achieved in the NBA during the 20th century. Name one player that is responsible for two of those. What's my man? I got one. I don't know. Uh, it was. How much time I got? Five. I want to say. I ain't got it. Who was it? I got uh, Akeem Olajuwon, David Robinson. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. This is Will House, man. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. say Pat. I was going to say Pat. <laughs> I was, was going to say Pat. Yeah, my, my. Question three. How many points per game did LeBron James average in his rookie year of the 2003-2004 season? During his rookie year? Oh, I got that. All right. Five. Uh, 19. 22. 21. Damn it. No, no, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh
Oh, there we go. There we go. No, what are you talking about? There you go. There you go. What's it close? Over. It no, was fuck over. that. I ain't mean. We ain't never got that. What's 20.9 to 21? He had 19, my nigga. What's 19? That's not true, bro. That's cap. <laughs> if you average 20 points, uh, uh, what's that round off to? <laughs> what is 20.9 round off to, Weezy? 20, 21. What is, what is 19 round off to? 19, nigga. 21. Man, that's cap. Hell no. Nah, I ain't going 19 round off to 20. Ex- nigga, and, tw- and 21 right after 20. So Next question, answer? please. Is man, you, you, 20.9. <laughs> 20.9 was the answer. Man, bro, what? <laughs> I'm quitting. I'm done. I swear to God, I'm done. What? I'm quit. Well, nah. Fuck okay. uh, that. Go ahead. Go to the next one. I'm where's the question for? Because I'm, I'm three up, so I'm good. Three up. He's three, he's two, he's three to two. He it's didn't two to two. get that one, bro. Ain't no tie. It ain't no tie. He didn't get that. That nigga did not get that. If you have 19 points, if motherfuckers say, I got 19, and they say you got 21, and the shit say 20.9, Jeff, you know what's closer to 19, to 20.9 or 21? If we round it up, you got it. Period. <laughs> Judge just said me. Man. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Question four. What city has hosted the NBA All-Star Game the most times? Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna guess that. I'm gonna guess this one too. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. The most times. The most times. It was five. Give me LA. That's it's not true. San Antonio. Chicago. Okay. okay. That's a good guess. Question five: Who is the youngest? Player to ever play in an NBA game. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Markel Fultz. Yeah. Jermaine O'Neal. Andrew Bynum. Andrew Bynum. That was a good one. Yeah. So it's 2 2. No, get get the fuck. Bro, even if. the 20.19 ain't no fucking 21. I'm not. I'm done. I'm Jay. done. Jay, no, you're nah, not. Bro. No, you're not going to quit. No, you're going to do that. Like no, I'm done. No, you ain't going to do that shit like that. Bro, if 20.9 and 19. Going, nah. Going, so what other one did you get? So you got, got the, you got the, the king, king. I got a king. King. I missed that one. And I got the very first one. I got that one. Yeah. We, so we, so we tied it. Yeah. So I got that one. And then he got the king. You got a king. I didn't get that one. And then y'all both tied them. That ain't no tie. That's what I'm telling you. That ain't no tie. So what? So what? So what? So what? Three one. No, I got three. three, I got two. I guess I got two. two. Right. So you got three two. He got three two. And if we both count that one, then it's still three. It's then it's four two. No, we both count it's three three. So if he get this one right, y'all be tied. If you get this wrong, if he get this one right, y'all. We already if 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 we throw that one out, it's tied. If we throw that out, it's tied. Throw it out. So it's tied. <laughs> man, I, I swear to God, I ain't doing this shit no more. I'm not. I, I ain't doing this shit no more, man. <laughs> Jeff won. Now, Jeff won. Yeah, yeah, nah, Jeff won. I don't now care about this. Right? Nah. Nah, this is five questions. Yeah, nah. Jeff won that shit. I ain't doing that shit no more. <laughs> that shit's stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah nah, because you have the clear thing. That, nah, f- 20.9. That, if you put something that's 20.9, and this thing said 19.0. No, I ain't saying that. No, I'm just saying that. Did you know that was wrong? That's wrong, bro. But it's all good. Go eat them on the way we record. That's a bad mix, too. And it looked like it. And that is the end of the FSP Sports Trivia. I will set out the rest of these. <laughs> that shit stressing me out too much. I get too mad. Um, That was a good time. Shout out to Coach Locke for that. You guys ready to get started the second half? <laughs> nah, man. Let's talk about it. Nah, ain't nothing to talk about. The second half is underway. Second half of the 2019 NCAA basketball preview show, FSP style. I am J Ho. <laughs> it's your boy Big Jeff. I'm Weezy. What it do? Weezy, finally, after months and months of waiting, the 2019 NCAA basketball season is finally here. And that can only mean one thing it is time for some FSP bowl predictions. Now, we're not guaranteeing that these things will happen. Mm hmm. We're actually double guaranteeing Uh-oh. that every last one of them. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but we certainly don't expect all of these predictions to hit for sure. Mm-hmm. With a little bit of luggage, oh, excuse me, with a little bit of logic mm. and a little bit of deductive reasoning 
and a little bit of gambler's luck. Shout out to Weezy. Yeah, shout out. We think that all of these predictions have a real <laughs> chance of proving to be true. Let's kick it off. The first award is the Bob Cousy Award, the top point guard in the nation. Mm-hmm. Last year's winner was Ja Morant, Murray State. Shout out to him. Mm-hmm. Who's your pick for this year, Weezy? Cassius Winston. Your brother. Yeah, Weezy's yeah. twin. Weezy's twin. <laughs> you look like dude. Yeah, you look just like Ooh. dude. Oh, my God. Hey, man, Weezy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I look just like it. Yeah, for sure. I got, I, you well, got I got cash okay. as well. I yeah. say senior leadership coming back. You know, um, talk about talk more about this team as as it, as this list progresses for sure. But I definitely got cash as my Bob Cousy Award winner. Yeah, for sure. It was fun to watch in college, man. Yeah, not only is he the best point guard in college basketball, he could be national player of the year. Yes, sir. Has an impact on both sides of the floor. Mm-hmm. This team is poised to have a deep run mm-hmm. in the Final Four for sure. So. Um, Cassius Winston is yeah. uh, my pick as well. Okay. Coach Locke also had Cassius Winston well, look at that. as well. Look at that. Clean sweep. Okay. Let's move on to number two, the Jerry West Shooting Guard of the Year Award. And our last year's winner was R.J. Barrett from Duke. Who you got this year, Weezy? You always get nervous when you come to me on these, on these picks, don't you? No, I don't. I have a lot of <laughs> faith in you. Really? So, I, know I believe you, in you, Weezy. Yeah, your research. I went with Marcus Howard. Sure. Guard from Marquette. Okay. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Dope. Really good play. He can go, Joe. Yeah. Only, um, I think it's him and another person, two other people, the only two uh, coming back, averaging more than 25 points a game. Nice. So, okay. Under six feet plays well. I went with Miles Powell from Seton Hall. Most definitely. Yeah. Senior. Yeah. Yeah, I watched some highlights of him last night, actually. Dude was dope, man. He coming back for a senior year. Seton Hall is the big East favorite with him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he got a national player of the year. Little buzz. For sure. A little buzz for little him. Little buzz. Yeah, so I got Miles Power, man. I like his game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And also, his senior. Yeah, I also yeah. have Miles Power as well. Um, he works out with J.R. Smith in the yeah. offseason, his young I mean, boy. take that for uh, yeah. so <laughs> take, take that for what you want. You want. <laughs> but he's coming back, averaging 23 points a game from last year. Yes, sir. And he had 28 on Kentucky. So that's when I was open, uh, when I was actually found out a lot about Miles Power. Um, average 27 he had an end to the tournament last year. So, he'll yeah. get a lot of buzz this year. Yes, him and no seat in the hall, guys. So, yeah. Coach Locke also had Miles Powell as well. Yeah. Moving on to number three, the Julius Irvin Small Forward of the Year Award. Last year's winner uh, was Rui Hachimura from Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. Who you guys got winning the Julius Irvin Award? I went with Kerry Laker <clears throat> from Florida. We'll transfer from Florida. Blackshear. Blackshear. Mm-hmm. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Kerry Blackshear. Yeah. We'll transfer to Florida. Okay. Dog. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. Talk about him soon. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I went with Jordan Noir. He's a junior from Louisville. And I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing his last name. I had a talk, had a trouble with it this week. Okay. So my bad. Six A junior, ACC Player of the Year contention, and I, he's gonna lead Louisville deep into deep into the tournament with a nice yeah. run. Um. And he thought about going to the draft last sure year, did. but he thought better of it, came back. And I think it was a great idea by great him. Great idea. Yeah. I uh, also have Jordan yeah. Noir okay. as well. Uh, but he's Noir. Yeah, Noir. Okay. Yeah, okay. no, you're right. Okay. Yeah, I just want to slow you up. Okay. He's gone. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, Jordan is the single reason why Louisville is a top five team, final mm-hmm. four candidate. He does everything on the floor. This is the best player on that team that Chris Mack has coming back. Every 17 to 7 last year. Can do it all. One of those. Uh, project players, yeah, kind of resembles um, a lot of Rui Hachimura as well. So glad he, thought, glad he thought better going yeah. to the league. That was, that was a good decision, yeah, for sure. And Coach Locke also had Jordan Award as well. Welcome to me, Coach Locke. Right. Shout out to Coach Locke. Number four, <laughs> the Carl Malone Power Forward of the Year Award. Last year's when it was Jeff's guy Zion Williamson from mm-hmm. Duke. Kyle Who Dumb. you got going, Weezy? Reggie Perry, Mississippi State. Yeah, it's a killer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Not mad at that. That's Sean Wash boy. <laughs> Little, Little Rock. Rock yeah. yeah. Little Rock kid. Yeah, for sure. Reggie Perry was supposed to go to one of these big schools and produce last year. Goes to Mississippi State. Kind of flies under the radar. Breakout year for him as well. I, I agree with that. All right. I got Jalen Smith from Maryland. Okay. A sophomore. Double double machine. Yeah. Yeah. And it's his time to shine this year. And I think he's going to be the one to lead Maryland. Maybe not a deep run. But they, you know, he should have a great sophomore season. He's going pro after this. For sure. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, I have a Mama D Diakite from Virginia. Like that's pick. Tony Bennett's guy. He was also was about to go into the draft as yeah. well, waited till the very last minute to pull his name from the draft. But just one of those athletic players that's going to be a 4-5-4 four, four, that a rebuild in Virginia team. So he and Jay Huff team up one of the best front court players in the entire uh, NCAA. 
Coach Locke had Xavier Tillman from mm. Michigan State. He's going to see more minutes with Kenny Goins and Nick Ward gone. So, shout out Xavier Tillman from Michigan State. Okay. And last but not least, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Center of the Year Award. Um, last year's winner was Ethan Happ from Wisconsin. Yeah, Ethan Happ. Ethan Happ was a total Wisconsin player. Yeah, total. Who you got, <laughs> who you got Weezy? I want James Wiseman, man. Okay. The young boy. Yeah, yeah. He okay. a Kool-Aid. I can see that. Yeah. I like that. I definitely um, had the same glass of Kool-Aid. Yeah. Uh, same picture of Kool-Aid, I okay. should say. James Wiseman. Should win this running away. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He should win this running away. He should win this running away. Wow. Yeah. If, if he... If he if he was what they say he was. Yeah, I just think he'll get enough touches with all those players on that team to get national player of the year for the center position um, numbers. So he'll have 16, something like that. I think I think he'll give him 18 to 20. Okay. Just be real. I can like, see that. The ball's yeah. going to run. It's going to. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the offense is running yeah. through James Wiseman. Wiseman for yeah. sure. Number three pick in the draft coming yeah. out after my Number guy. Number one. <laughs> Number two one pick. Three. <laughs> after my guy. <laughs> I bet that. Uh-huh. Nope, 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 nope. Um, <laughs> me and Coach Locke's pick is Udoka Azubake mm. from Kansas. Azubake is a, trapped in a, in a bit of a no man's land uh, okay. in 2019. Really one of those powerful guys mm-hmm. at centers, kind of a dinosaur. Exactly. Yeah. But really almost too small to play any other positions. Okay. So he's just a great player, man. He's 274 pounds with. Uh, 7% body fat with a 7 7 wingspan. It's a specimen. Yeah, no, for sure. So he's one of those players. Got hurt last year. Yeah. If he can slightly improve from that 13 and 6 from last year, um, he could be the nation's best big man for sure. All right. So you guys got the rest. All right. So we got breakout player of the year. Mm-hmm. Who you got, Jay? I got my guy. Uh-oh. Listen, this is my John ja Morant pick from last year. This will be A.O. DeSumnu from Illinois. I'm telling you, the first true freshman to lead the line nine in scoring. AL could have went to the lead, comes back, working mm-hmm. on his game, working on his body um, to get back to 100%. And I think he'll be a lottery pick, maybe a top 10 pick um, for that um, Illinois team. He'll do the same thing. Do you remember Jawan Evans that played under Underwood, mm-hmm. the Illinois coach at Oklahoma State? Mm-hmm. Um, he'll do the exact same thing Jawan Evans did at Oklahoma State, but at Illinois. I mean, I'm telling you, this kid AO is a dog. You just watch. Okay. Hope my bulls get him. Oh boy. Sure. I want Cole Ooh. Anthony. Break out. Okay. Break it out then as a freshman. You break it out. Cole okay. Anthony, man. Yeah. Oh. Got a lot of pressure on his back by being point guard of Jay's team, the UNC Tar Heels. For sure. Mm. But you know, Cole Anthony's son. I mean, he's, what's called son? What's his name? Greg. Greg Anthony. Greg, Greg Anthony's mm-hmm. son. You know, so we'll see what he does. Yeah, that's what sure. I Cole yeah. Anthony. Cole Anthony. He's okay. going to break out. All right. I got and um, Coach Locke picked Reggie Perry for Mississippi State. Everything that I talked about um, for Reggie Perry is going to be a really good year for him in Mississippi State. So I like that pick, Coach Locke. I got Isaiah Livers from Michigan. Mm. I think he's going to have a great year coming in this year. He doubled his – he's going to double his points per game is what it looked like. He stepped his three-point percentage up last year over 6%, taking more shots. He's going to be leaned on a lot more with Jawan Howard being his first-year coach, one of the few guys coming back to that team. So Isaiah Livers is going to have a great sophomore year. I like that. Yeah. All right, biggest impact transfer player. Mm-hmm. Who you got, Jay? I have Kerry Blackshear Jr. from Florida. Virginia okay. Tech just didn't lose Buzz Williams this offseason. He lost – they lost the best player on their team. Um, he's coming from Virginia Tech where he averaged 11 and 6. And I think he'll be a uh, the linchpin for that loaded Florida team. Mm-hmm. That team is low. Listen, I'm telling you, Florida's the best team nobody's, nobody's talking, talking about. about. Dude, they are loaded. Yeah. And Kerry Blackshear is the uh, head of that snake for sure. Plus one on that one. Yeah. Kerry Blackshear. Okay. I got Justin Pierce. Hey. Hey, don't kill. <laughs> hey, hey, boy. He committed to your, your tar heels. Yeah, for sure. You know, he he's he's one of those guys you put him wherever you need him. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? He picked the tar heels over Notre Dame in Michigan. I he wish did. he would have went to Michigan. <laughs> he averaged 15 last year, nine boards and four assists. Yeah. So you can, like I said, he's gonna fill a position where you he need did, him. Yeah, for sure. We lost our top five scores. Man. Yeah. So he can get your bucket. You landing him is a major pickup, six seven. Yep. Like what Jeff said, can do everything. Two fifteen. Yeah, man. He's one of those players, man. So we won't have to lean on Cole Anthony to do everything. Right. Justin Pierce is gonna step in and do exactly that. And Coach Locke also picked Kerry Blackshear. Gotcha. Right. All right, mid major player of the year. Who you got, Jay? Hey, so all right, shout out to my guy, Coach Penny. Okay. This guy. See, this ain't fair because you got inside it. <laughs> no, 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 they played against Cal State Northridge last okay, year. Okay, okay, okay. And 
after the game, um, Penny and them, they lost this game mm-hmm. at Cal State Northridge. And I called him after the game and I said, dude, who in the hell is Deion Because mm-hmm. this kid, he had 25 on them yep. and he was everywhere. And I was like, why? He's, he's, this kid should be playing like power five basketball. Penny's like, I don't know, man, but he, he was killing us, you know. So yeah. um, his name is Lamine Deion from Cal State Northridge. Double, double machine. Averaged 24 last year. Nobody talked about it. 24 and 11. They also have um, Ron Artest's son as yep. well on that Cal State Northridge team. So just a strong, nimble um, player that's going to play in the NBA. So remember yep. the name Lamine Dionne. I agree with that 100%. That's yep. who I had as well. Also be on the lookout for Antoine Davis for Detroit Mercy. He's yeah, a no, sophomore. Sure. He, listen. Nick, go ahead. What you might say? <laughs> Average 26 last year. Broke the freshman record for made three-pointers in the season with 132. You know whose record he broke? Who did he break? Steph Curry's record. Yeah, for no, for sure. So that's that's somebody you definitely want to watch out for as a mid-major. This kid's solid. He's put, he has range from right outside. Once he crosses half court, you got to be in front of him. Yeah, at all listen, times. Like, hey, at listen. all times. People not talking about Antoine <laughs> Davis, dog. So at all, as soon as he crosses half court, you yeah. got to have a hand in this. Do he have 26 last 26. Year. Yeah, dog. <laughs> For Detroit Mercy, yeah. he's a dog. Yeah. You got with Charles Bassey. Yeah. From West Kentucky. Okay, yeah, listen. Charles Bassey played against Penny and them as well. Yeah. And he also um, was given. Give them a little hell. A little bit. You know, a little bit of hell, yeah. but I think they did really well against him. Mm-hmm. They did really well against Biggs, but yeah. watching him play, he was a top five player in the country. Goes to Western Kentucky, comes yeah. back one more year. Yeah. He's going to absolutely kill at Western Kentucky next year, and he'll be a lottery pick. So I like that. We Coach you. Locke also had Charles, um, Charles Bassey as cool. well. For sure. All right. Best freshman not playing for a top 10 team. Mm hmm. Who you got, Jay? Let me go. I, I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Wiz. Isaiah Stewart from Washington. Mm, okay. I like that. Killer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Seven four wingspan. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Big man, double double machine. Mm-hmm. Ready to go to the buzzword. Yeah. Okay. Because he, he get a bucket. He get a bucket. Yeah, All for right. sure. I got PJ Fuller shooting guard for TCU. Yeah, you gonna get it. Yeah. Four star guard coming in. That's who gets a bucket. Yeah, he's going to get six four two guard, quick gets to the spots he wants. Streaky shooter, streaky. I can get a bucket. Going to get it. Yeah, you know, don't expect him to play no defense. No, nah, he's scoring know. first. But if you want to watch somebody put up some buckets at TCU, go watch PJ Fuller. For sure, two guard. Um, my best freshman not playing for a top ten team is Romeo. Excuse me, it's Romeo. It's Romeo Weems from DePaul. It's okay. been a while since DePaul had a player like this. Um, he's going to step in and be and immediately be the team's go-to player. Yeah. Six foot seven tweener. That's the reason why he didn't go to Dukes and Kansases and things of that nature. But one of those players that was a player of the year in Michigan mm. and was an absolute dog. Just a tweener, man. Mm-hmm. Your, um, your Draymond Green problem. A lot of these players that are very, very good out of the state of Michigan, they get overlooked because they're not 16, True. Two, like 250 pounds with a 7% body fat. Right, you know, right, so right. shout out to Romeo Weems and DePaul. He's going to kill. That's a good basketball name. You know, it is. Romeo Weems is tough. <laughs> um, Coach Locke had Anthony Edwards, shooting guard, point guard from Georgia. Not mad at that coach. This is a top five player in Not the world. He's going to be a top three pick in the draft. Top five. He's going to be a top three pick in the draft. Maybe number one. What you want to bet, cameraman? Bet, bet he go top two. Oh, there it is. You know, yeah, we're going to bet that. We're going to bet that. <laughs> You just watch Anthony Edwards. You just watch. Top five. That kid is special. Yeah, the only thing about him, he's going to play at Georgia, mm-hmm. and they're not going to win games. Mm-hmm. So, in turn, it's going to be that whole point where, like, well, is, is he not impacting the game? No, they don't have players to help him out. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. I just don't yeah. think he'll be top two. He'll be top two. Mm-hmm. It'll be Wiseman, him. Watch what he does, bro. <laughs> just watch what he does. This is a little house, man. He like to, he like to call him out on the show. So and that's fine. Mm-hmm. I, I know I know the number one number one or two pick is already the last Who's name that? ball. Ooh. <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, most overrated player. Okay, who you got, Weezy? I went with Duke's own Trey Jones. <laughs> yeah, I just think he's. <laughs> He didn't get to a spot like I would. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like how you would. Yeah. yeah. Terrible, and, mm-hmm. and I just, I don't like it. I don't like yeah. his game. Just, think it's it's a reason why he came back. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. It. No, sure. For sure. That's it. Like, they just say it's a reason why. Because he was he was born and done yeah. all the way around. It's the reason why he came back. Also, the reason why, to me, mm-hmm. I selected him as well. Yeah. 
I do think his kid's a solid ball player. Yeah. But I don't think with the hype machine that he came to Duke with that he lived up to that. And I don't think he'll be able to live up to that as well. I think he'll stay there three and a half, maybe four maybe years. Maybe four. I think he's there. He's yeah. there. Yeah. This this is the thing about Trey Jones. He's an old school point guard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His game has transitioned out. Yeah. Um, I don't have him as my most overrated player, but I think that this kid – if if this was ten years ago, mm. five years ago, mm. seven years ago, seven, yeah. he'll be a lottery pick. Okay. But just the way the game has changed, he's not the type of player that will be um, Bollywood and looked at like yeah. one of the best players in the world. Okay. And no, you know, it's just the game changes. Look at your, look at your little Okafor, best player in the world, gets rookie of the year. Yeah. His game phases out. Yeah, and now he, he's, he's obsolete. He's, he's, a he's new barely world. holding yeah, on. He's to barely holding on. Yeah, and he's. If this was 10 years ago, Jaleel Okafor would be a perennial all-star. As a rookie, he averaged 17 and 10. He was rookie of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the game changes, and you have to change with the game, and I don't think Trey Jones did that. Mm. Okay. Um, My pick for most overrated pay is Silvio de Sousa. Mm. Now, they've tried to get this guy eligible for two and a half years. (laughs) It never really happened. And he's, you know, he, he arrived there. Luther, Luther Curl. Luther Curl. Right yeah, at it. just want to play ball. Just, just not you need a little bit more of that spray. But um, he only averaged nine points, nine rebounds. On this team, they actually needed a bid. So um, Azuba K goes out. You think, oh, you bring in Silvio De Souza, he's going to do exactly the same thing. Nope. Nope. Didn't do half of that. <laughs> so I hope um, at a time where they really need him because that Kansas team is starting from scratch. Yes, sir. Um, Silvio De Souza will continue to let the Kansas Jayhawks down, like how they do with every big man that they've had in the last 10 years. For sure. Wow. Um, the most overrated player, in, according to Coach Locke, is Killian Tao from Gonzaga. Mm. He, and I I have him maybe winning the power forward right. of the year. <laughs> so Coach Locke doesn't believe in him. He Shout out to Coach Locke. That uh, he was considered an All-American, but he didn't, he don't think he'll be able to elevate since Rui Hachimura is no longer there. Okay. I like that. Not mad at that coach. All right. All right. Speaking of coaches. Speaking of coaches. We want to coach on the hot seat. Oh, yeah. You got Weez. Shaka Smart. But damn, no. He's on fire. That thing's on fire. Shaka Smart. I I hate saying yeah. that too. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I just think it never really Luther Curl at Texas for him. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it did he's like he's 20 34 overall at Texas. Yeah. That ain't good. Yeah. No, nah, and his senior hasn't been great at all. Mm-hmm. Four yeah. years. It's Four been years. Rough. 71 to 66. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in the wrong spotlight not to be great. Yeah. If he was somewhere else that you know, okay, he's good. He's average. He's had some some tough breaks though. Yeah. Jackson yeah. Hayes leaving early. Jared Allen both being one and dones. Andrew yeah. Jones has I, leukemia. Isaiah Tyler leaving the yeah, year a couple exactly. a couple years early. It gets tricky. And if he's fired by the university, they still gotta give him ten million. Yep. Yeah. But here's the thing though. Okay. Happy I have I have him as my coach of the high city as well. Okay. Um, they won the NIT last year. They did. You know, more victories are for minor league coaches. I for get sure. it. I get it. How, however, that's a stepping stone. Yeah, it is. So he's got to do it this year. Because yeah. at some point, you look around and say, man, we haven't done anything. And you want yeah. to splash higher. Like yeah. You got to turn it around. So I'm pulling for Chaka Smart, but he's definitely my coach on the hot seat as well. Yeah. My coach on the hot seat is Danny Manning from Wake Forest. <laughs> Less than two years ago, he made the first NCAA tournament as a head coach for Wake Forest, yep. and they gave him an extension through 2025. Yep. So you know what that means? He's they a- would have to pay him $15 million if they fire him next year. So needless to say, they're not going to do that. <laughs> Since he did that, uh, back-to-back seasons with 11 wins, 4-14 and in the ACC. It's just tough, man. Come on, Danny. Yeah, Danny. Danny has to get some players down there. The football team's playing better. Yeah. Got to get the basketball team playing as well, man. And, you know, you hire somebody like that. You think yeah, it'll you be thought it was going to be a splash. And yeah. They extended them. I hate that. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Coach Locke has Sean Miller in Arizona. With all the scandals with that team that he has, <laughs> he has really great players. Josh Green is going to be there. Yeah. Um, the point guard who will be a top 10 pick, um, Nico Mannion. They have a squad True. in Arizona. If they don't win this year, he's out of there. Okay. For sure. All right, let's move on to probably the one that's going to be the most argued about. Okay. Best conference in college basketball. Okay. Who you got, Weez? SEC. Woo. SEC. I think SEC will have one, two, three, four, five, six teams in the tournament. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Because you, you got Auburn. Yep. Auburn's in the tournament, right? Auburn's in yeah. the tournament. Ole Miss? Mm, possibly. In the tournament. Possibly. Kentucky? Possibly. Yes, sir. Kentucky for sure. LSU? Yes, sir. Nah. Yes, sir. It's going to be close. Alabama? Nah, not this year. I think so. Yeah. In Florida. Florida for sure. In UT. 16. In UT. 
UT. UT's not making the tournament. I don't know about you. I think UT, I think UT yeah. brings back just enough. Yeah. They turned around last year at the right time. Because I also have the SEC. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. I like it. Exactly. Know, they improved their stock this year. Yeah. yeah. For sure. But teams that are bad going to play yeah. meaningful basketball. But their bottom teams are really bad. My pick is the yeah. ACC. Yeah. You got Virginia. Uh, with the team, with the, one of the uh, arguably the team with the best recruiting class in North Carolina, mm-hmm. bringing in Pitt, who's on the rise. Louisville's a trendy top uh, Final Four pick, mm-hmm. nine twenty plus win teams from last year, and they also have Coach K and Duke. So yeah. <laughs> uh, loaded would be an understatement. The ACC is the best conference in college basketball. Coach Locke has the same thing. Mm-hmm. So two SECs, two ACCs. For sure. Okay, yeah. I'm mad at it. Yep. Team that will make the biggest jump. Mm-hmm. In 2018, 2019. Wait. Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Yes, that's your squad. That's your squad. Yeah. That's your squad. Ole Miss Rebels, man. Mm-hmm. I, actually, I got him going Sweet 16. Yeah. That, I'm telling Kermit, he he does some good recruiting. He got a, another year under his belt. It's his second year there. So, I see a, a big deal going there. Okay. I'll I'm drinking the Kool Aid again. I'm going back to the to the school that broke my heart in college basketball. Yeah, that's your squad. I got the Memphis Tigers. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. They're going to make the biggest jump. They're going to make the tournament and make a run in the tournament. We'll go a little. I go into that a little bit more later on. But yeah, I'm drinking the Kool Aid and the Memphis Tigers. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, me and Coach Lock have Seton Hall. Going, uh, they will bring in their argument. I think Seton Hall is the best team in the Big East, and Ooh. eventually bringing back the same roster from last year, yeah. which matters. And the main thing, bringing back Miles Powell. So yeah, um, solid supporting class. I think that these dudes will figure out. I think they were only one player away from making a big run. So they'll be good. Finish 9 and 9 in conference. They didn't even finish ranked last year. So True enough. I think Seton Hall will definitely make a big splash next year. So you and Coach, Coach Lock both had the both same had that. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I got, uh, excuse me. Next is the team that will make the biggest fall in yep. 2019. Who you got? Virginia Cavaliers. Mm. They lost a lot, dog. They lost a lot. lot. They lost a lot. I mean, it's by default. Yeah. yeah. They lost a lot. They lost, lost seven lot. players. Lost seven players from yeah. the team that that really won, 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 won the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So I got them as well. Like, yeah. Just because, just off sheer fact, they lost so much, and yeah. that was a, and that team to me was the example of what a team should look like. Yeah. Because the fact they came together and won the whole thing, but yeah, yeah nah, it's, it's gonna be tough. Come back to earth this year though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Did you, yeah. yeah. No, I had Tennessee. Um, they won mm. thirty one games last year, missing out on Kerry Blackshear. Him going to Florida hurt. That was tough. Because the Vols had basically everything other than a big man. So, yeah. Lamonte Turner's going to have to step up. Mm-hmm. Should be able to make Tennessee bands forget that Jordan Bone left early. Josiah James should be an immediate impact as a freshman. There's a lot to like about Jordan Bowden as okay. well. So, But not having an anchor on that offense okay. with a person like Kerry Blackshear to fill that Grant Williams role, they'll be back at the end of the top 25. Way down. But way down. Way down. Um, Coach Locke has Purdue. Okay. They finish the season number eight in the final polls. You lose Carson Edwards. A huge blow to Purdue in the Boilermakers. Not mad at that. Sure. All what about right. Texas Tech? Just a question. Nah, they're going to fight. Nah, they're going to be right back. Oh, they're right back. You sure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They won't be a, a top five team, but they'll still be a top ten team. Gotcha. They'll play meaningful basketball in March. That's how it matters. Yep. As long as you're playing ball, ball that matters in March. Yeah, that's how it matters. All right. Coach of the year. Yeah, yeah. Who you got? Yeah, yeah. Roe Williams, man. North Carolina. He's got a tough one. That's a hater right there. I get it. <laughs> Roe Williams, North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, I just think this is his year. He landed Cole Anthony. I don't know how he did it, but he did. I, you know how he did it. No, I know you don't. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy budget. Open up a little bit. <laughs> you here. What you got? What you got? Um, I'm still drinking from that Kool-Aid. There you go. Penny Hardaway. Wow. They got a really soft schedule. They got they, that's you, you see they, do like I said, they, they yeah. don't play anybody. Yeah, man. <laughs> and and they, it's gonna look, look and, be a lot of blowouts. But it's gonna help them out though, having a soft schedule like that. You're bringing in so many new pieces. You're gonna have time to jail. Exactly. Yeah. So that's exactly what I was gonna say. They're gonna have time to jail. And how I look at it, playing that soft schedule by the time it picks up, mm-hmm. they'll be playing the best ball. And yeah. be ready to hold. Wait, we know all about March. You gotta be battle tested. Yeah. Don't worry about they, they're not going to be battle tested. It's true. It's true. It's, yeah, we'll see. But, but I like that. Penny Hardaway. Yeah, I have Chris Mack from Louisville. The ACC is wide open as it's ever been. And the majority of Louisville's rotation returns 
argumented by a great, strong freshman class. Mm-hmm. I think they're deeper in every position, at least on paper. Okay. Uh, they should get some real contributions from his freshmen. The Cardinals start strong. They'll have some Final Four talk, which we'll talk about real soon. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Coach Locke had Mark Turgeon. Um, I think he says returning all players minus Bruno Fernando, Anthony Cowan for this Big Ten title team and make a big run. Sophomore class is loaded. Shout for out Mark Coach Turgeon Locke. and the uh, Maryland Terrapins. All right. So here's the big one. Pause. Yes, sir. The National Player of the Year. Yes, sir. Who you got? Weezy. Cassius Winston. Young Weezy. Hey, man, Weezy. Yeah. Cassius Winston, man. <laughs> you know what he did? He stuck around long enough for his game to catch up with his ability yeah. for the hype. That's a good one. I like yeah. Cassius Winston. He's a good player, man. Yeah, solid player. Yeah. I have Cassius Winston as well. For sure. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, you got yeah. it. I was just going to say, like, what we said earlier, like, for the best point guards, like, yeah. he's going to be the leader on probably the nation's best team. Exactly. He's going to have a lot, of, a lot of eyes on him, a lot of lights on him. He's going he's gonna to deliver. He's going to shine. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, National Player of the Year for the boy, Cole Anthony, North Carolina. Oh, freshman. My. It ain't no <laughs> question, man. The one preseason Saturday near North Carolina is we. Cole Anthony is able to put on a show, okay. even more so than Kobe White before him. So oh, my he's goodness. unquestionably. The uh, just ready for this game. Um, I think he'll be a top five pick, but we're talking college basketball, yeah. And he'll lead to high usage between him. He has um, a great team around him, but they don't have a score. And Cole Anthony will average 20 and eight. I just think Cassius Winston will win more games, that's why he won't win point guard of the year. Okay, but Cole Anthony will be national player of the year, and that's for damn sure. Wow. Coach Locke, Coach Locke who has mean? Marcus Howard from Marquette. Not mad at that, Coach yeah, Locke. For sure. He had to play for Marquette to win. <laughs> so he got to. Kevin Man agrees. Howard is cold. Mark Howard yeah. can go. Yeah. He can go. Kevin Man agrees. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. Most definitely. Yeah. It's a good pick. Right. But you, he's going to. Cole Anthony's going to average a dub, though. Oh, you you average a dub? Let's bet that. Come in the frame so we can shake your hand. Oh, okay. You don't want none of that. <laughs> he's going to average a dub. Okay. For sure. All right. Let's, uh, let's jump ahead a little bit. Okay. Let's jump to another form of the sport, though. Okay. Early women's okay. final four prediction. Most definitely. Who you guys got? All right, let's go with our number ones. Number one seed. Okay. <laughs> for me, I got Oregon. Yeah, I got Baylor and Coach Locke has Oregon. Okay. Number two seed. Tennessee. Okay. I got uh, Texas a and I got South Carolina and Coach Locke has Baylor. Okay. Number three seed. Baylor. Con- Connecticut. Maryland for Coach Locke and I have Oregon. Okay. Yeah. Four seed. Oregon. <laughs> Stanford. I have Stanford and Coach Locke has Texas a and There we go. Go. All right. Now let's move on to the men's Final Four prediction. Sure. Now here it is. Yeah, yeah. Let's fight it out. <laughs> Number one seed. Who you got, Weez? Michigan State. Michigan State. I have Michigan State as well. Coach, Coach Locke. Locke has Michigan State. Number two seed. Duke. Kentucky. Uh, I have Louisville and Coach Locke has Kansas. Number three seed. Kentucky. Memphis. Duke and I have Gonzaga. Okay. I'm a four seed. Four seed, excuse me. Louisville. Louisville. Florida for me and Coach Locke has UNC. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. We, we were all around there. Yeah, right? that's, that's up in the air. Yeah. Nobody don't know nothing. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Somebody I feel good something. about my pick. My, my team, we, I couldn't put North Carolina Duke in there because Duke is not going to win meaningful games. I was Because that team is. It's just too young. I was close to saying Duke would be the fall off team, yeah. but I realized where they lost that in the final in the yeah, tournament they lost last year. The second round. Yeah, Duke have a st- yeah. they made, made it to the lead eight. Does yeah, Duke have an impact yeah. impact player this year? Um, yeah, um, the big man. He, mm. I mean, he won't be a he'll be a lottery pick. Okay, yeah, yeah. he's good, but he no it's big players. Yeah, it's not, no, it's not, not last many year. players were mentioned in any of these. Yeah, yeah they don't have it's a Zion or AJ Barrett. Yeah, it's no. not. It's not not last year. It's not the traveling circus yeah. that they was last a, year. They have, a, they have a team. You know, yeah. some of those players are three or four year players. Coach K, that's what that's what usually that's what he's usually best at. Yeah, but team. some of them think that they're one and done players, and that's where the problem lies, for sure. Hey man, I'm excited about college basketball. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, don't 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 break my heart, Memphis. Hey, Memphis, hey, I'm telling you, Memphis is going to help you out. I'm don't, telling you, they're with saying. Memphis. They'll be all right. They're going to win a lot of games. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, cameraman, <laughs> we are representing Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes, sir. Um, shout out to everybody that has dealt with cancer Absolutely. either way. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, it's a tough, tough situation. But um, cancer, man, I hate cancer. F cancer. F cancer. Dog. F cancer, for sure. For sure. Most definitely. Guys, it looks like we are off next week. 
Oh my goodness! You yeah. hear that, Jim? Yeah, we get a, we get an off. Does this kind of gets our PTO? It, no, now, I'm it, using mine. Are you using your PTO? <laughs> are you using your PTO? You, wait, 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 wait! The company closed. Yeah, the company Why am I closed. using my PTO? I'm just saying, tough company. Yeah, I'm going. You got to use your PTO. I'm going to HR. Any, I need to say that. Any, any, any big plans that. for the break? Ah, right, well, you know what next week it is. Who's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you got any big plans for the break? No, man, I'm just gonna hang out. Just gonna hang out. Yeah, just gonna hang out, baby girl. Yeah, yeah. Cameraman, any big plans? You excited though? You get all these two steps. He ain't gonna yeah, do he dance. He ain't gonna do a damn thing. <laughs> he ain't gonna do a damn thing. Oh, oh, he got, oh. He, street lights oh. come on. He got hey, <laughs> street lights come on. He got to get in. Oh, so, I'm just joking. Hey. <laughs> 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 for sure oh man now tweet us with the questions throughout the week oh, at damn. full sport press don't forget to comment give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the youtube page on the itunes page please rate and subscribe but more importantly don't forget to tell a friend tell a friend tell a friend we got an off week baby <laughs> to tell a friend wheezy everything paid for baby Jeff. camera's always on brother cameraman the revolution will be podcasted we are out Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Thank you for listening to the Full Sport Press Podcast. To catch up on prior episodes, visit the SoundCloud page. And don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend.